count of the times I've called your name some broken night And you showed up and patched me up like you do every time I get amnesia I forget that you keep coming around There yeah, ain't no way you ever let me down Good God Almighty
Good morning, Coast Hills family and friends. My name is Julia. I am the Director of Ministries for Youth and Worship here at Coast Hills Community Church, where we are a Jesus-centered community creating gracious space through acts of generous love. This Sunday is the first Sunday of Lent, so Ash Wednesday began this past Wednesday, and we're walking through 40 days uh, of Lent, which reflects the 40 days that Jesus walked through the wilderness. So as we do so, we're actually going through a devotional called Worship in the Wilderness. If you do not have one of these, please email office at coasthillschurch.com and we'll be sure to drop this off for you. It's got an amazing devotional sections to it that you can fill in and follow along through the series of Lent. So this morning, you'll see a couple different faces. We have Trevor Conkey leading us in musical worship. We have Deb McDougall leading us through scripture and Kevin is leading us through the sermon. So why don't we pray this morning as we continue throughout the service. God of feasting and fasting, mountaintop and desert, you gather us together by your Holy Spirit. May we follow Jesus in the wilderness, feeding on your living bread and tasting your water of life. We come hungry and thirsty for more of you, God. Amen. Friends, let us sing and worship as we move forward together. Though the tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, oh, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I cannot see you with my eyes, let faith arise to you. When I cannot feel your hand in mine, let faith arise to you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. Oh, you shine with glory, Lord of light, I feel alive with you. In your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I say, I will praise you, Lord. Oh, oh. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Sorrow comes my way, you are the shield around me, always you remain, my courage in the fight, I hear you call my name, Jesus I am coming, walking on the waves, reaching for the light, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing The joy of the Lord is my strength In the joy of the Lord is my strength The joy of the Lord is my strength In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
Mark 1, 9 to 13. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. Well, thanks for joining us for our service today. Would you agree with me that life has both mountaintop moments and desert days? There are times when you feel on top of the world, things are going exactly the way you want them to. And other days where it feels, or other seasons where it feels like you're just stumbling through the dusty, dirty desert. There are times when you feel well-fed, comfortable, surrounded by loved ones that affirm you, and there are other times when you're hungry, thirsty, lonely, anxious, scared, tired, and just plain fed up. For many of us, this last year has felt like that, hasn't it? And this is also true of our relationship with God as well. We have moments where we feel very close to God, like we feel like we're walking in His will, so to speak. We're doing exactly what we believe He wants us to. And then there are other days where we seem, or other seasons where it seems like God is so far away, and we have doubts, and we have struggles, and we have trials and temptations. If you feel like that, you're not alone. Everyone has these ups and downs, these mountaintop moments in these desert days. This is the human experience. And I am so grateful that our sacred text, the Bible, records many stories of people experiencing all of life, the hard stuff as well as these mountaintop experiences. And even Jesus experienced mountaintop moments and desert days. Our Lent series is going to help us journey with Jesus through the desert wilderness. Today, I want to highlight three things that, three, <laughs> I want to highlight three things that, that, uh, can, that, that Scripture can teach us about the wilderness experiences. One, that wilderness is not a sign of God's absence. Wilderness is not a sign of God's absence. Two, we are led by the Spirit into the wilderness The Bible speaks about this in in, uh, uh, various different ways. I'm going to highlight two today. And three, the wilderness can be a place of worship and transformation in the midst of our lives. The wilderness can be a place of worship and transformation of our lives. Today, I want us to understand one of the, the main story of the people of God and the Israelites, the, I guess I would call it the defining moment for the Isra- ancient Israelites was the Exodus. They were in slavery for hundreds of years and then they experienced this huge mountaintop experience. You see, they were led out of slavery through Moses and Aaron and, uh, out, of, and out of Egypt. And as they were led out of Egypt, then Egypt second-guessed themselves, sent their armies after them, and then as the people of God were uh, crossing the Red Sea, where it was parted, and just as they finished crossing the Red Sea, then as they're seeing their enemy come after them, the enemy, the Egyptians at the time, are thought, okay, we're going to cross the Red Sea, the two, they do, and what happens? The sea enfolds and engulfs them. You see, at that moment, in Exodus 14, the Israelites celebrated this by singing and dancing and having worship songs being played. And the Bible talks about uh, they're playing instruments. And there's, this was an amazing time for them in Exodus 14 and 15. They were on top of the world. They were out of slavery. Their enemy is now dead. And now they are free. But then very quickly, in Exodus 15, 22, 
they reach a desert or wilderness called Shur, where there was no fresh water. Here their joy turns into grumbling. Their worship turns into distrust. They immediately doubt that God was with them. Similarly, in chapter 16, they reach another desert called Sin, and here there is no food to eat. And they start to long for the days that they were in Egypt. They forgot about the oppression because their, hung, their tummies were very hungry. And they started complaining that they were going to die. Yet in both these deserts, Shur and Sin, in chapters 15 and 16 of Exodus, God provides for them with fresh water and with manna, uh, which is bread, which manna means, what is this? <laughs> it was like bread that fell from, from heaven, as well as quail meat. So God was with them in the midst of this wilderness. If we jump to Deuteronomy 8, verse 2, this passage shows us, or the, 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 the Bible authors at this time are trying to make sense of what was happening at the time. And they write this, Deuteronomy 8, 2, it says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these for 40 years to humble and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. You see, when we experience the struggles of the wilderness, I wonder if we shouldn't necessarily, I, I, well, I don't think we should see them as punishments from God because I don't think God does that or maybe signs that God is uncaring or non-existent because the Bible speaks, the fact that, speaks to the fact that God is with us in times of struggle. Because this is a merely a human experience for us to walk through wilderness times. And we're going to continue to walk through hard times in our lives. Instead, we need to see that in the, in the midst of the wilderness experience, this may be an opportunity for our hearts to be tested, for our true selves to be revealed of who we are. Do we really trust in God? Or do we trust in our own abilities and what we're able to do? Wilderness is not a sign of God's absence. It might be pointing us to who we really are ourselves. This leads us to the scripture passage in Mark 1, 9 to 12, and our second point. See, we are led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Interesting. Um, I want to read for us. Um, it's the Bible that Peter gave me years ago at my... Um, installation of our church. And um, so let's read Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. 13. One day, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son. You bring me great joy. Then the Spirit compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals, and the angels took care of him. See, Mark, the author of this gospel, wants us to see that Jesus begins his ministry with a very similar pattern to the people of Israel. Jesus passes through the waters, not the Red Sea, but the waters of baptism in the Jordan River. Then, there, 
in this mountaintop, has this mountaintop experience where the Spirit of God descends on him and a voice of the Father speaks words of affirmation and devotion to Jesus. He says, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. You see, Jesus had this mountaintop experience and Jesus is identifying with the people of Israel 40 years in the desert and Jesus is now is a, a, about to be brought and led into the desert by the Spirit for 40 days. We might expect that after this high point, Jesus would be launched into his ministry of preaching and demonstrating the kingdom of God, yet this was not what happened. Like Israel before him, Jesus goes from the waters to the wilderness, from spiritual feasting, you could call it, to the struggle of fasting, from affirmation to loneliness and temptation. And Mark wants the reader to understand that it is the Spirit of God who is leading Jesus into the wilderness. Do you see that? In verse 12, it says, at once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever had moments where you thought God was calling you, sending you, empowering you to do something incredible and it was followed by setbacks and disappointments and loneliness and temptation and wilderness. I just want to say you're in good company. <laughs> so take heart that you actually might be following in the footsteps of Jesus. Wilderness is often a place that the Spirit of God leads us to, actually. The Father led Jesus into the desert by the Spirit. And I would say that He, God, leads us there too. If you're in a wilderness season right now, it might have been the Spirit leading you there. And that brings us to the third point I want us to make, I want to make today. That the wilderness can be a place of worship and transformation. But it might not look like the worship you're used to or the worship that you want to lean into. Coming back to the Exodus story here. Exodus 7, verse 16 um, there's this point where um, uh, it's, it's recorded, it says, let my people go that they may worship me in the wilderness. Let my people go that they might worship me in the wilderness. Worship in the wilderness looks quite different than worship on the mountaintop. And here we see God leading the people of Israel through wilderness, and we see God by the Spirit leading Jesus through the wilderness. And we might understand that God may be leading us into the wilderness for what? For worship, to continue to worship in Him and for transformation, something that would happen and change deep inside of us. So this worship experience is going to look different in the wilderness than it would on the mountaintop experience. It might involve aspects of worship such as fasting or solitude or simplicity. We're going to touch on those along the, the journey in these next few weeks. It might turn uh, us towards silence or lament. Yes, lament is actually an aspect of worship. 40% of the book of Psalms are lament. And that book of Psalms is considered the ancient Israel's worship book. 
In week three, we're going to be looking a little closer, a little closer at that, where it talks about where we, the, the theme is, a, it's a sorrowful journey. And we'll touch on that aspect more specifically later. But Lent is a time for just that. We observe the 40 days that Jesus was in the wilderness as he, observe, as he was, in a sense, relating to the ancient Israelites who were in the wilderness for 40 years. Usually, this is at Lent, is usually a time that Christians abstain from coffee or chocolate or other pleasures in order to try and physically understand what giving up something might feel like. Well, I want to suggest that this year, you should give yourself permission not to give so much up because there has been a lot that we have given up during this year, hasn't it? There's been a lot that has been taken away from us this year. So maybe in a pandemic year, it might look a little different. So I want to say, be gracious with yourself and eat your chocolate. <laughs> if you want to remove chocolate uh, and use that as a, a Lent um, discipline, then that's totally fine. But for those of us that feel like this has just maybe kicked us a little too hard, I would say enjoy your chocolate. It seems like we've been walking through a whole year of Lent. So the one thing that I want to highlight this year is that as a church, we're emphasizing the opportunity for us to lean into um, the devo this devotional book um, that we hand-delivered to most of you. Um, you'll see it. It's um, basically, we got the PDF and we photocopied it and then we bound it. I want to thank Danny. Uh, Danny did all the, Danny Boehm did all the binding. Tracy did the photocopying. They put these things together for us. And, um, and um, if you still haven't received this, um, can you make sure that you email the office and we'll make sure that you at least get a PDF so that you can track along with us. Um, there are five um, reading uh, exercises, I would call them, each week. So it's not even for every day, but there's five per week. It starts with two during the week of um, Ash Wednesday, which was just last week, and then five um, for every week going forward. And um, what I like, really like about this devotional book is that it gets you interacting with the scripture reading for that day, either by drawing or writing or reflecting. And it, it doesn't take that long, but it, it's pretty focused. And it gets you thinking about uh, what, this, what does this mean for us uh, to worship God in the midst of wilderness. So this week the theme is a spirit-led journey. And um, the book will follow that theme, the devotional book. Next week, Julia, which is going to be great. We're, I've been asking her for a while now to preach, but so she's going to be preaching on a simple journey. Then the devotional is going to follow that theme. It's something that we're able to do together, even though we cannot be together. As I was handing out these booklets this week, uh, knocking on doors, whoever was home, those that weren't, I was leaving them in mailboxes and, and uh, in different places. But someone said this to me, and they just said, as I handed them the books, they said, thanks for this. We really need some focus at this time. This has been a crazy year, and I'm hoping this will help. Well, I'm hoping this will help too. I want to encourage you, encourage us all, to take this opportunity in the next 40 days to track along with each, track along with the book and along with each other as we intentionally press into what it means to worship God in the wilderness. Malcolm Geit, uh, UK poet, says this, and he's speaking about Lent. He says, Lent is a time to set aside, to reorientate ourselves, to clarify our minds, to slow down, to recover from distraction." to focus on the values of the kingdom of God and on the value God has set on us and on our neighbors. It's like that just before the wilderness, that the 
where, where, Jesus, where, where the Spirit of God spoke and said, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased, in whom I love. And Malcolm saying this, is that Lent is a time to focus on the values of the kingdom and on the value God has set on us as well as our neighbors. And this is what we want to do as a church. Some of us may feel that we've had a lot of wilderness thrust upon us. You might be going through a desert time right now. I know that I have. Can I just say that God is with you? God is with us. He never wants to see us suffer, but He's passionate to see us trust Him in the midst of what we are experiencing and that we would learn to worship Him in the wilderness. Other, others of us might feel great. We might be on mountaintops right now. But even so, we can actively choose to learn to worship God in wilderness ways. Learning to find God in the simplicity, in the sorrowful, in the hard parts of life as we prepare for what might lie ahead. Israel was transformed through her wilderness worship. And we can be too. May we find God's grace in the midst of the wilderness of our lives that we are walking in right now. And may you know that God is with you, that the Spirit is most likely leading you, and that you are able to worship in the midst of of the wilderness you're walking through. It just might look different than the mountaintop. Peace to you. Wanderers in this wilderness Yet we find
strength enough to sing of your unfailing love and you are close closer than we know and there will be a day Thank you, Trevor, for leading us in, that, in these songs this week, and especially that last song. Um, yeah, would we find grace in the midst of the wilderness? Church, receive this benediction. Whatever wilderness the Spirit has brought you to, walk in boldness as a beloved child of God. Walk in peace under the shelter of the Most High. Walk in faith, knowing Christ walks with you. Go in knowing that truth this week. And we'll see you next week. Yeah.